So we've got a pulley system, and this pulley system has two masses hanging off of it, mass one and mass two. Mass one has a mass of two kilograms, mass two has a mass of six kilograms. Um, the pulley is going to be frictionless, but it's also going to be massless. And without a whole lot of behind the scenes things here, I, I, I'm just gonna let you know that if the pulley had mass, then it would have some rotational inertia and that would actually impact the results. We're also gonna say that the string is massless and we're also gonna make the assumption that the string is not stretchable. So we have a lot of assumptions that we're making here, uh, not the least of which is the fact that the air is also non-existent. So there's no atmosphere here. This thing is happening in a vacuum, so there's no air drag, okay? So there's lots of simplifications that we're doing here, just like we have in the past. But before I even start, I'd like to block off a little bit of space, and I'd like to draw the FBDs, the free body diagrams, for these two masses. And for mass one, no doubt about it, there's going to be some gravity involved. What could I label up the gravity force on this one as? What do you say, Jessica? Um, well, it would be 9.81 meters per second squared for the acceleration due to gravity. But what would I actually call the, the variable, the force variable? What, what subscript would I put on that F? Oh, FG. Yeah, FG. FG, and I might be specific, force of gravity acting on mass one. Okay? And then for the second mass, I can do something similar. I can have an FG2. <clears throat> Notice that I'm not even bothering to draw the arrows to scale here, because the numbers are all going to work out. FG2. <clears throat> What's a force that would be acting up on mass one? Right here, mass one. What's the force that would be acting up on mass one? What do you say, sir? Yeah, force of two on one. That's a good guess. It's a great guess. Force of two on one. And if there's a force of two acting on one, acting up on mass one, what do you suppose might be acting up on mass two? Yeah, force of one on two. Action reaction force pairs. Not a problem. Now some people, when they do these problems, well, you know, let's, let's uh, add in all of the forces here. First off, Fg1, that's mass 1 times 9.81 per second squared, or 2 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. Let's just throw in the value. 2 times 9.81. Anybody know what it is off the top of their heads? 2 times 9.81. 19.62. Yeah, 19.62. 19.62 kilos, I mean uh, newtons rather, mm -hmm. and for mass 2, 6 times 9.81? Yeah, 58.86 newtons. All right, now at this time we don't know what force of 1 on 2 is or force of 2 on 1 is, okay? Um, what I do want to point out, though, is we always have to deal with these positive and negative directions, and it's clear that uh, FG1 and FG2 are in a, in a tug of war with each other, if you like, trying to pull back and forth on this pulley, but they're both pulling down. So we come into a problem here where we can't really call down positive or negative. We kind of have to talk about the tendency of a system, either to tend towards the right or to tend towards the left, if you get my meaning, right? So we have this, this pulley system, and what I'm going to say is... I'm going to label my original illustration with sort of a, a curved arrow, and I'd like to decide one direction is positive and one direction is negative. What, based on the masses here, can you make some prediction about what might be the best uh, decision for a positive direction? Garrett? Yeah, I'd say right. Makes sense. Looks like the, the six kilogram mass is going to sort of drive the system to the right. So we'd say that this system has a tendency to move to the right, I predict. And so I'm going to choose strategically to make the right-hand side to be the positive side. Although in the end, it would re really wouldn't matter which one I chose, as long as I was consistent about it. So I might say, and I actually might decide to add this, and I will decide to add it, onto my, my values here. 
I'd like to say that this is positive 58.86 newtons for the force of gravity on mass 2. And the other one is going to be negative 19.62 if you have the space on your paper to add the negative right in front. I, I don't because I did it in marker and it's a little bit chubby. But negative 19.62 newtons for the force of gravity acting on mass 1. And that's because of the, the uh, directional reference frame that we've chosen for this, tending to the positive being po uh, tending to the right being positive and tending to the left being negative. Now some people like to draw FBDs the way that we have here. I'm going to show you an alternative for drawing FBDs for pulley systems and I'll just do it really quickly. Some people don't like drawing these because having down be negative for this guy and down be positive for the other guy is a little confusing for some folks. So what they'll do is they'll take the whole system and they'll stretch it out sideways. And in their mind, they'll say, ah, I'm going to call one direction a tendency to the right, and I'm going to call the other direction a tendency to the left. And much like we drew, did on our, our uh, initial illustration, we might call to the right positive and to the left negative. <clears throat> and then they go about adding these force vectors on. So we might have Fg2 and force of 1 acting on 2, acting on the second mass, and force of 2 acting on 1, and Fg1 acting on the first mass. And in effect, people that do it this way kind of think about gravity as trying to rip the system apart outwards. And for people that like to think very linearly, this linear way of thinking is really good because you're, all you're thinking about now is adding up all the x components at some point. That might be useful to you. Um, as opposed to before, having to keep track of, on the left-hand diagram, uh, down being negative, and on the right-hand diagram, down being positive. Now, if the second method doesn't work for you, that's fine. There's no hard and fast rule saying that you must do it that way, but maybe it works for you, and maybe it does help you to sort of straighten out the situation, because literally, it straightens out the situation. So I've got my FBDs. That's great. The next reasonable thing, and this could be a part A if this was like a multi-part problem, the next reasonable thing that people might ask you to do is to find the net force on the system. And in that case, the second method for drawing the free body diagram actually makes it a little bit easier. Because I just draw this whole system as one big sideways rectangle with gravity trying to pull it one way and the other way. And I could say, all right, for, for the whole system, forgetting about the internal forces, just the external forces, that is gravity in this case, I've got FG2 pulling the system to the right and FG1 pulling the system to the left. So I have 19.62, or negative 19.62 newtons, and positive 58.86 newtons. And so F net would be the sum of those two, Fg1 plus Fg2, or negative 19.62 newtons plus 58.86 newtons. And I know that somebody has got a calculator going. What's the net force on this puppy? 29.24, you say? I think so. Okay. Yep. I believe it. Positive 29.24 newtons net force on the system. Does anybody else buy in that? Okay. Sold. Let's try a part C, a reasonable part C. If I now know, the, now know the net force on the system, what do you predict part C could reasonably be if I was being pretty methodical about this? It's all about predictability. I mean, we're being very repetitive here. Same as what we did yesterday. Could I find the acceleration now? Okay. So let's do that. Find the acceleration of the system. And I've left myself a little space here because it's only, it's only going to be a little bit of space. Because as we've said before, to find the acceleration of the system, acceleration of the system, it's equal to the 
net force acting on the system divided by the mass of that system. And the mass of the system really 6 kilograms plus 2 kilograms, m1 plus m2. So we could even write it out that way, because some people do like to see it that way. So m1 plus m2, 2 kilograms plus 6 kilograms, is going to be 8.0 kilograms. And the net force on the system we've just found to be 29.24. Sorry? Oh, did I mess that up? I should have written it as 39.4 before. Yeah, you're right. 39.24 newtons divided by 8 kilograms. Thirty nine too far divided by eight should be uh, something around five. But what is it exactly? Four point nine zero five. Four point nine zero five? Okay. Four point nine zero five meters per second squared. So we've got the acceleration of the system. And you would be shocked, or maybe you wouldn't be shocked, at how many people when I ask them the acceleration of a system like this, will say, Ah oh, well, it's hanging under the force of gravity. Obviously it accelerates at nine point eight one meters per second squared. Wrong go. It does not. Now, if you snipped the, the rope, if somebody came with scissors and clipped the rope, of course it would. But that's because there wouldn't be two forces sort of working against each other here anymore. You wouldn't have a system hung over top of a pulley. you just have two falling bodies. This is never going to accelerate at 9.81 meters per second squared, unless these are two free-falling bo bodies. 4.905 meters per second squared in this particular case. All right, the next logical question. And can I take this away, guys? The next logical question is to find the net force on each individual mass. Find the net force on each mass. And to do that, I might draw a free body diagram for each mass. And again, I'm going to work with this this whole uh, gravity ripping the system apart methodology just because I kind of like it. You don't have to. FG2 F1 on 2 F2 on 1 FG1 and I know that for mass 1 acceleration 1 is going to equal to 4.905 meters per second squared I know that mass 1 is equal to 2.0 kilograms, so F net for mass 1 is going to be equal to the product of those two values, M1 times A1. And uh, I know that 2 times 4.905 is equal to, does anybody know it off the top of their heads? It's a familiar number. Yep. 9.81. Happens to be 9.81 newtons. Don't get it confused with gravity. It just happens to be that value, okay? Sometimes we have these sort of ugly coincidences, but it just happens to be, and I'm not trying to play a trick question here or anything like that, it really is just a coincidence this time, okay, because of the numbers that I've chosen. And we can do the same thing with mass 2. Acceleration 2 is equal to 4.905 meters per second squared as a consequence of mass 2 accelerating at the same rate as the entire system, times 6.0 kilograms, and so F net 2, 6 times 4.905 meters per second squared, Somebody help me out. What's 6 times 4.905? What is it? 29.43. 29.43. Okay. 20.43 newtons. <clears throat> and again, those guys have net forcing to the right. But what I can also say is that F net 1, this is the answer we were looking for, by the way. F net 1 is equal to FG1 plus F2 on 1. And F net 2 is equal to F1 on 2 plus FG2. And at this point, a really reasonable part E question might be to find the force acting through the string. Uh, force, oopsie, acting through the string. And that is 
force one on two, force two on one, or otherwise known as the tension force. Because we mentioned last day that force one on two or force two on one are just ways that we, as people who understand Newton's third law, express the idea of tension being transferred between these two objects, okay? So that's the idea that we're trying to get at here. What's the tension force? Or in other words, what's the magnitude of force one on two and force two on one? Because the absolute magnitude of force one on two and force two on one is the magnitude of the tension force. Just question of which object is pulling on which and which free body diagram we're talking about. So I'm going to pick on the first one. F net equals G1 plus uh, F2 acting on one. And I'm going to get F2 on one all by itself. So I could say that F2 acting on one is equal to F net one minus FG1. <clears throat> Just for lack of sight, I'm going to come up here to the top right hand corner of the page. And I say that F2 acting on 1, or the tension force of object acting on 1, is equal to the net force on object 1, or 9.81 newtons, minus, and FG1, you'll notice, is pointing in the negative direction based on the reference frame that we defined earlier, minus negative, and what was FG1 equal? Do you recall? 19.62 newtons. So minus negative 19.62 newtons <coughs> Did you get it, sir? Should be 29.43 That sounds about right 29.43 newtons And so we could say that F2 on 1 is 29.43 newtons But there's a way to check this What equation could I use from part D to check to see if force 2 on 1, or the tension force, really is 29.43 newtons. You tell me, what would the check be? Which expression could I use? F2. Yeah, F net 2. You got it. Thank you for helping me out there, Jacob. Why don't you leave me hanging? I could use this equation now to check to see if force 1 on 2 is the exact same value. And I'm not going to do it right now. I want you to try it. That's my challenge. Check to see if we did it right. Okay. If we did it right, we should get 29.43 newtons again, and that's great. It's good to have multiple ways to confirm that we know what we're doing. I'm going to leave it at that. By the way, it does work out. <laughs>